first person shooter genre is one I hold very dear to my heart. It's probably because I grew up playing a lot of shooters back in the day. My friends and I would play a lot of Quake 2 and Counter Strike 1.2, bunny hopping around and shooting each other on different maps while getting better with different weapons. But there was one game we barely touched its multiplayer during those years, but I love playing its single player campaign and that was Half-Life. I vividly remember playing it in the internet cafes amidst the tobacco smoke, trying to tackle and defeat the pixelated matter which stood between me and the end credits. It was not only my first PC game I probably completed, it was one which fascinated me for many years until the inevitable but quintessential sequel came out, Half-Life 2. With the release of the sequel, Avao decided to port the original Half-Life in the newly developed Source engine, but unfortunately people were quite disappointed. It was pretty much the same game as the original, just featuring very minor improvements. So when Valve didn't deliver, two projects named Leak Free and Half-Life Source Overhaul projects were created. Realizing they have similar goals, the 13 people behind them decided to join forces into what they would call Crowbar Collective and try to recreate the classic. Initially released as a free mode back in 2012, it coincided with Valve's launch of Project Greenlight, a place where Steam users could vote for games to be put on the storefront. And thus, Black Mesa then became one of the first to be successfully voted for and Valve approved its release onto Steam. While Crowbar Collective released the game, it wasn't really finished. The infamous Xen levels weren't included because the team had their own vision on how they should play out. It took them a while, but after a few years, on the cold day of March 6th, 2020, the game was finally complete. This is Black Mesa. Graphics are not something I really care about. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the beauty some games have as we've reached a high point in graphical fidelity, but it's not what I remember them for. For example, some of my favorite games are not great looking. Yes, few of them are old, but others simply shine elsewhere, where for me matters most, the gameplay. It is a game after all. So what about here visually? Black Mesa doesn't steer away from the original art style, so pretty much everything hits right at home. The game uses the Source engine, which dates back to 2004, and thanks to brilliant use of lightning and effects, you get to experience a beautiful game. It's thanks to the wonderful dynamic shadow work, which makes the colors pop around you and contributes to the feel of creepiness. The game being set in this highly secret research facility also helps, and gives me a slight chill down my spine whenever I walk around its corridors. Sometimes I even feel if the darkness could talk and tell you tales of horrors. There's a lot of creepy stuff around. I really like the environments and one of the reasons why I think they're amazing is the details you can see around the levels. I never felt something was out of place and didn't belong. It's really wonderful walking around familiar places and still feel you're seeing something completely new. Another thing is the guns. It really shows how much care they put into each one and I think they look excellent. I mean they even gave each one a special pickup animation. I always appreciated those. It just gives each weapon a bit of personality. So I think that sums up the good, but what about the bad stuff? Well in my opinion there is only one and it's not the fault of the developers, it's the textures. Looking up close, you can clearly see the engine's age, especially when you reach the surface levels, it's very noticeable. The game's strength visually is when the levels are darker, it gives the proper atmosphere and hides the dated textures very well. Bottom line, it wasn't something I was bothered by and I think Black Mesa has some incredible moments to show and deserves quite a lot of praise. The other thing we have to talk about before we get into the really important stuff is the sound part and it is glorious.
As a shooter, what matters is how the weapon sound, and I'm happy to report they sound clean and crisp. If you can make the bad weapon sound good, you know you're in for a treat. Heads up, we got a hostile. From firing them, to reloading, to firing them again and again, I love it. My favorite, the Magnum. Music to my soul. The other thing which always must come hand in hand with any game from this genre is the kick-ass music. And we have it. What you just heard were some of the tracks by Joe Nielsen, who did such a stellar job on the soundtrack, I can't find anything bad to say about it. It just fits so well. You can find it on pretty much any platform and I strongly recommend a listen. There's also a little bit more voice acting in here than the original, and it's all good. I, uh, I heard screams up ahead. Uh, you first. You can hear the little chats around, and I think it's pretty neat. Hello, Dr. Cross. I'm not one for idle chatter, Gordon. Makes the whole facility a little bit more lively, and it gives it a bit of charm. I like it. Stay back! Take her! It's not my time! Don't worry, he's human! If you're trying to escape, I'm coming with you. In conclusion, I can't think of a single bad thing to say. Everything here is excellent, so we should move on to the important stuff. The gameplay. Black Mesa is a linear game through and through. It's bare bones, no open world nonsense, no side quests, just you, your weapons and those destined to die by your bullets. And that's just the way I like it. While shooting takes nearly 80% of the game, the other 20 consists of environmental jumping. For those sections you have to master the trademarked crouch jumping mechanic. Reminding us of the good old but forgotten days. Because of how the Source engine is built, movement feels as I remember it. Fast, tight and very responsive. There are very few times where you can blame either the controls or the game for untimed jumps. It's most likely your fault. You also have the sprinting ability and here there's no limit on how much you run. It helps when you're in a fight and want to take a quick cover, but then you get accustomed to constantly using it and in the end you're sprinting at every possible moment. Where you see me spend a lot of time as well besides jumping around like a madman is playing with the physics. Just good old fooling around with objects is a pastime I always do around here. It's just too damn fun when everything is not placed or glued to the world. And I did it way too many times. What is that stench? In the end, what they deserve is a beautiful death.
I didn't encounter any game breaking bugs. There were things here and there that made me lift my eyebrows, but nothing to render the game unplayable. And that's about it. Jumping, running around and shooting. Black Mesa in a nutshell. But for a shooter you need guns. Lots of guns. Best military grade hardware this side of the Rio Grande. Have at it. We start with the icon of the franchise, the crowbar. The satisfaction you get from stopping a headcrab as it's lunging towards your head is priceless. Early in the game you rely on it a bit more than needed, mainly because the only other enemy this early is the classic slow moving zombie. After the crowbar is the Glock, your best friend if you want to dispatch foes from afar in the beginning. Semi-automatic with the left click and automatic with the right click. It helps when something just appears out of nowhere and you panic. The Magnum Opus, the second and most powerful handgun. How can you not love this? You can kill the majority of enemies with a single shot and it never gets boring. Alternative fire is ADSing, but who does that in a shooter anyway? The shotgun. You can kill stuff with one shell or two by using alternative fire, but at first I thought it felt underpowered. But when I began to rush enemies to literally blow them up, it started to grow on me. I used it way more than I thought I would, because it's just too damn fun to watch fireworks made out of limbs. The submachine gun or the MP5 is your best friend. Uses the same ammo as the Glock, but logically kills things faster. What we really want to use the MP5 for is the grenade launcher. Pure pleasure. The RPG. Nothing out of the ordinary, just your classical make explosions friend for your explosion making needs. If you want something really dead, there's nothing better than a rocket heading towards them. Alternative fire activates the guiding laser for taking care of those moving targets. The crossbow. It's pretty much one shot kill, but the rate of fire is very slow and the reload takes ages. It kinda ruins my tempo whenever multiple enemies are trying to kill me. It's fun, but definitely not my favorite. Alternative fire is zooming with the scope. Gauss gun, or as I call it, the mighty laser. My favorite weapon in the game. The feeling of melting someone with the alternative fire and not yourself. Is highly addictive. I'll never get tired of playing with this, I just wish it had more ammo around the early levels for it. The glue on, nah. This right here is called the vacuum cleaner. It sucks the life force out of everything you see, literally. This thing is mighty fun. You get it last in the game, but at least there's plenty of ammo for it. The Hive Hand, or as I call it, the Flymaker. The most useless weapon in the game in my honest opinion. It shoots slow, and even if you shoot with a secondary fire, it feels quite weak. I use it just for footage, never liked it anyway. The Snarks, or as I call them, the Chugga Chambas. I've always wanted an army of flesh eating bugs at my disposal. It's just so fun watching people getting devoured in real time. That is unless I am the one being eaten by those adorable little monsters. The frag grenade. I always felt off about it. Somehow they recreated that feeling. Bonus points for that, but I always prefer shooting at people than tossing a grenade. Satchel charges. Now this is something I really enjoyed. Just throwing a charge and waiting for people to get around the corner to just press that little button and watch them blow up is probably one of the highlights of the game for me. I feel like Santa and these are the poor little children who weren't very good and the only presents they're getting are full of explosions in their little ugly faces. Trip mines. It's a fun little device that will blow any being who doesn't see the giant emitting laser they produce. I mean, it's not my fault they have impaired vision. But what kind of a shooter would this be without enemies? There's a lot of them. And variety is plenty. Headcrabs, your first and classic encounter. They jump for your head so make sure to blast them in midair for extra points. Personal points. There is no point system unfortunately in the game. Zombies. The slow moving, pretty much non threatening walking corpses are just there to waste your ammo, so you make sure you waste something you rarely shoot with. Alien slaves. I didn't know they were slaves before when I was playing the original. I feel bad for killing them. They shoot this laser which doesn't do much damage, but it's cool when they miss. 
Barnacles or as I call them, tongue twisters. Why? I think it's self-explanatory. These bloody things are annoying at times because their tongues blend in with the environment and occasionally will try to pull you. Easy to deal with after you've seen them, few shots and they're out. Hound eye, but I call them screamers. They scream and usually come in a pack to push you in a corner and sing you a lullaby. The use of explosive is preferable as it will get rid of them the fastest, but you can always just give them the good old friend the magnum. One shot to the eye and they're goner. Bow squid, but to me they're spitters. When they see you and I say when, they'll spit green vomit which is weirdly toxic. They require a bit more ammo to deal with, but the magnum always gets them if you shoot them in the mouth. Alien grunt, the big sponges. I usually just spam them with bullets or just shoot a rocket to their faces. Ich, ich ti, just a big fish. There's only one type of otter enemy anyway, introduced with a crossbow which is quite useful against it. Poke it full of holes and send it to the bottom of the ocean. Alien Controller. They appear much later in the game. I didn't know they actually controlled the poor slaves back in the day. So now I make sure I kill every and each one of them. Marines, the cannon fodder, everything goes against them, maybe toss a satchel charger their way. I always like hearing them react to different types of situations. Assassins, or let's be real, ninjas. You know what's satisfying? Shooting a short skinny leg jumping around idiot in the face with the revolver and then wondering where the rest are. So in between these altercations there will be occasional boss fights. First one is the tentacle, or as I call it, the claw. <laughs> You can't really hurt the claw with your weapons, you can only scare it with a blast from an explosive right into its hole where it's coming from. How to deal with it? Power the rocket engine and watch it burn. The Garks are an interesting bunch. Your first encounter is quite memorable, you kill it by burning it with electricity. Starting to sense a theme here. Gonark or BFM, Big F***ing Mama. You're gonna battle this thing in several arenas, and I gotta say, it's a really fun fight. Proceed to fill it full of lead. What distinguishes Black Mesa as well as the original from most games is the way it revealed story elements. It was through set pieces or monologues by certain characters that revealed what has happened and must happen. I just overheard a secure access transmission. Soldiers have arrived. They're coming to rescue us. Of course, I have my doubts that we'll live long enough to greet them. Something which today's developers have long forgotten and have chosen to go to the film approach. To me, that is the biggest problem I have with today's games, as I feel it disconnects the player and the main character on pretty much every level, and I don't think that should be the case. But enough about that, what about the actual story of the game? We are, of course, Gordon Freeman, a renowned theoretical physicist who takes a tram ride on his way to work. This serves as the introduction of Black Mesa Research Facility, his workplace which for obvious reasons resembles Area 51. On arrival, we learn we must partake in an experiment involving pushing a card. And this is where I say, spoiler alert. If you haven't played this game and will, go here. Are we good? Okay. What we actually did was create a dimensional rift between Earth and a place called Zen. And with that, a bunch of aliens crossed over. Yes! Yes! Initially, our task is to escape with our life intact. Along the way, we pick a hefty arsenal, so slowly but murderously, we proceed to kill every zombie and alien in our path. But oh no! Look! It's the army! Thank God you're here! Goodness gracious! I do believe he was trying to kill me! Nothing surprising, the government is trying to cover the whole incident by killing everyone who was part of it, not on our watch. Battling our way, we learn that there might be a way to close the rift between the two worlds. 
Hey, it's Freeman, right? Hold up a sec. One of your scientist pals said they'd give you a message. Uh, you're supposed to take this old rail system up to some sort of satellite delivery rocket or something. I don't know where it is exactly. We reach the silo where we must launch the satellite, so the Lambda team can reverse the effects of our wrongdoing. Was it enough? No time to answer, we get captured. For some reason they decide to leave us breathing in some sort of waste crusher? We use that to escape through the waste processing area. Not long after we reach the Lambda complex, from the scientists we learn that a powerful being is holding the portal open and we are the only one capable of defeating it. I'm sure that you will know it when you see it. I am loath to say this, Gordon, but you must kill it. Yeah, you better kill it. Of course we are. And thus after we vigorously fight a horde of enemies, waiting for the portal to be opened, we hear the magical words and proceed to enter the outer world called Zen. Let's pause for a second. I honestly didn't know what to expect from Zen. I was torn mainly because I knew they were going to change what most consider the weak part of the original Half-Life. And personally, I just like change in general. Especially when you're bringing an already established concept to old and new players alike. And what we got was exactly that. A complete overhaul. But was it worth it? For Black Mesa, yes. It was. It's good. It's really good. Watching the vibrant colors of the fauna, the animals, not to mention space itself form, made my jaw drop several times. It's a visual spectacle. In this bizarre world, we'll be traversing a bit of different environmental puzzles, such as leaves or water lilies. We'll be navigating through the insides of giant tree structures, while of course, fighting aliens. Witnessing the slave camps, it makes it clear the mastering behind all of this must be stopped. Telonga. Telonga. Here is where we encounter Big in Mama several times, playing cat and mouse. We show her who is boss while trying to get to the source. That is where we meet the great Nyalan, a being which deserves nothing but destruction. He greets us. And we greet him back with everything we have on us. We triumph, but realizing his defeat is imminent, he tries to take us with him. That is where we meet a certain man. Gordon Freeman in the flesh. A man who was watching us. Do we accept his assignment and await further instructions? The choice is ours, or is it? Yourself, a decisive man, so I don't expect you'll have any trouble deciding what to do. 
if you're interested, just step into the portal and I will take that as a yes. Otherwise, well... I can offer you a battle you have no chance of winning. Rather an anti-climax after what you've just survived. Time to choose. Black Mesa is a great game. A piece of history that will be remembered especially for me who loves Half-Life in general. It's a fantastic game which can offer a different take on the source material. You can notice the little details that the people behind it have put into the world because they took care about the original and want to do it justice. And because it's made in source, everything feels so half-life-ish. It felt like a new yet familiar song. Zen especially was not something I thought I would enjoy, let alone admit it fits so much with the rest of the game. It made me dance, even though I don't like dancing. They managed to create a beautiful piece of art and the team behind it should be very proud. And all I can think about after all of this is how I've never felt so much in love with something I thought I wouldn't. Does that change my opinion on the original? No, absolutely not. The game will always hold a special place in my heart. But Black Mesa is like that little sister you never had. You realize how much she means to you after she's born.